Okay. We are going to change directions a little bit today. I know yesterday we did a little bit of stretching in our faith and understanding. Um, and, and so I want to I want to bring things uh, into a different place today. And in this session, what I want to talk about is, you, you know, um, what do we do with prophetic words? Uh, I'm very grateful to the Lord for the way that he was moving last night uh, among us. خیلی شکر هستم که دیشب طوری که خدا کار کرد بین ما. And and I, I, I love when, when the prophetic begins to flow. Uh, and I, I've been exposed to the prophetic uh, at least since 1996. So at least 23 years, I guess. Yeah, 23 years. And in 1997, I began to, to train people in the prophetic. سال 1997 شروع کردم به تعلیم دادن مردم در این قسمت. And it was something that the Lord began to reveal to me. We, we had a very strong outpouring of the Holy Spirit in 1996 in my dad's church. در کلیسای پدرم ما یک حرکت قوی روح القدس داشتیم در کلیسامون. We met every night for 130 something days. هر شب ملاقات داشتیم با هم دیگه جلسه داشتیم برای 130 خورده ای روز. We saw incredible miracles. Uh, in, in, incredible outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Um, and and uh, and the prophetic really began to 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 flow in a different dimension. I mean, growing up, the only prophetic. You know, when I was very young in the church, the only prophetic I ever saw was somebody spoke in tongues and somebody else said, yeah, I'm coming soon. You know? And that was the only prophetic I knew before 1996. And, and so when this outpouring happened, um, we, like I said, we were meeting every single night. And and we were very we were very young in the prophetic. We made a lot of mistakes. And and I'll talk about some of that later on. Because my heart is that uh, you wouldn't just see other people minister in the prophetic, but that you would do it yourself. Say it again, please. My heart is that you wouldn't just see other people flow in the prophetic. But that you would operate in it in, in fullness. And hopefully... Uh, in, in the next several sessions that I have with you, um, I can save you the years of mistakes that we made. And and uh, and so this this is very important to my heart because I want to see a pure prophetic generation arise. And people that are in tune with the heart of God. And, and they share the heart of God with other people. Because that's the essence of the prophetic. Um, back in 96 my idea of the prophetic was to tell you everything wrong with your life 
تو سال قبل از تو سال 96 من فکر می‌کردم نبوتی اینه که همه اون چیزهایی که تو زندگی شما اشتباه هست رو بهتون بگم. Aren't you glad you didn't know me in 1996? خوشحال نیستید که منو در سال 96 ملاقات نکردین. And and so it was an immature it was it was a true gifting from the Lord but it was very immature. و اصلا بالغ نبودم تو این قسمت نبوتی. And a lot of it was rooted in in uh, wrong understanding of scripture. و همین طور کلام خدا رو درست درک نمی‌کردم. And and it was also rooted in, in my understanding of what the prophetic was supposed to look like. به همین طور به خاطر اون ریشه فکری من بود که اون طوری که اون طرز فکری که من داشتم نسبت به کار نبوتی خدا. And it was almost like if somebody was very rude when we thought well they're just prophetic. تا یه حدی که اگه مثلا یه نفر خیلی مثلا بی ادب بود و با پررویی چیزی رو میگفت فکر می‌کردیم خیلی نبوتیه. If somebody's very serious, well, they're just very spiritual and prophetic. وقتی یه نفر خیلی جدی و مثلا مذهبی هستش مثلا فکر می‌کردیم خیلی روحانیه. How many know rude is not a fruit of the spirit? چند نفر می‌دونن که بی‌ادب بودن میوه روح القدس نیست. All right. Serious is not a fruit of the spirit. و جدی بودن میوه روح القدس نیست. All right. What's fruit of the spirit? میوه روح القدس چیه؟ Love, محبت, huh? joy, شادی. Man, what it, what would happen if we had prophets full of love and joy? چه تفاوتی می‌شود اگه ما انبیاهی داشتیم که پر از محبت و شادی بودن؟ That'd be a miracle. موجزه می‌شود. What if we had happy intercessors? چه تفاوتی می‌شود اگه می‌تونستیم چی می‌گن کسایی که شفاعت می‌کنند، شفاعت کنند دهه شاد و خوشحال. It'd be a sign and a wonder. Amen. I mean. So in 1996, when we had this outpouring, um, we learned something very quickly. وقتی که این در واقع پوری روح القدس جاری شد تو سال 96 خیلی چیزا یاد گرفتیم. We were not ready for an outpouring. ولی در این حال برایش آماده هم نبودیم. We had a handful of us that did all the worship and all the Ministry and all the preaching. We had a few people who were limited to doing all the things that we did. All the things we did, the preaching, the teaching, and all the things we did. And we became tired. We were tired. We were just worn out. دیگه یه جورایی بریده بودیم because we were meeting every single night چون هر شب داشتیم ملاقات می‌کردیم جلسه داشتیم and we had people from different parts of the city coming to visit and see what god was doing و مردم از جاهای مختلف شهر می اومدن به اون جلساتی که ما گذاشته بودیم که ببینن که چه اتفاقی داره میفته after that season of outpouring the lord began to speak to me about some things بعد از اون در واقع فصل پوری از روح القدس خدا شروع کرد با قلب من صحبت کردن the first thing he said to me was اولین چیزی که به من گفت این بود much of the church is praying for revival what's that much of the church is praying for revival خیلی از کلیسه ها دارن برای بیداری دعا میکنن we're praying for an outpouring برای پوری روح القدس he says but But much of the church is not ready for what it's praying for. ولی خیلی از کلیسه ها آماده نیستن برای دعایی که دارن میکنن. And he said, and and then this is when he began to open my eyes to Ephesians chapter four. و این چیزی بود که چشم منو باز کرد در مورد افسوسیان باب چهار. Where it says there that that Jesus has given ministries to the church. اما یکی عیسی خدماتی رو به کلیسا میده. And in fact, we can just read that very quickly. Mitzunim chali sadi bechunimesh. Ephesians chapter four, Ephesosion, Bab Chahar, verse eleven, verses eleven uh, through thirteen. Yaz dah ta sizda. Yena fer bechun rotfa. Aul yibashide, yibashid bachi o bomer آیه بعدی با مقدسی رو برای کار خدمت آماده سازد برای بنای بدن مسیح Is that 11 through 13? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now I want you to notice here that the ministries that we see here apostle prophet evangelist pastor and teacher و اینجا می‌بینیم که میگه رسول نبی مبشر و شبان و معلم 
that they are they are given to the church to equip the saints. میگه به کلیسا داده شدن تا مقدسین رو چکا بکنن برای کار خدمت آماده بکنن و بنا بکنن. This means the first responsibility of a prophet for example. خب پس این به این معنیه که مثلا یک نبی اولین کارش چیه؟ is not to prophesy. نه که فقط نبوت بکنه. It's to equip others to prophesy. این که بخواد بقیه رو آماده بسازه و بنا بکنه. The first responsibility of a teacher اولین مسئولیت یک معلم is not just to teach truth فقط این نیست که بخواد حقیقت رو تعلیم بده it's to teach others how to get truth بلکه بهشون یاد بده که خودشون چجوری حقیقت رو دریافت بکنن amen amen and and so so if you're and here's what we've we've seen in the body it's like only the pastors or the prophets or the apostles are doing all the ministry. با این چیزی که ما تو کلیسا ها دیدیم که فقط معلما و شبانا و انبیا هستن که توی کلیسا دارن همه کارا رو انجام میدن. And the rest of us watch them do all the ministry. و بقیه ما فقط نشستیم تماشا میکنیم که اونا خدمت رو انجام بدن. Oh pray for me please. با میام جو با من دعا کن لطفا بر من دعا کن. You're the super spiritual ones. تو خیلی دیگه روحانی هستی. You're the closest ones to God. تو به خدا خیلی نزدیک تری. Pray for me, please. برای من لطفاً دعا کن. That's a wrong mentality. این یک ذهنیت اشتباهه. They're supposed to be equipping the body of Christ to do what they do. وظیفه اون انبیا و رسول و معلم‌ها اینه که بخوان در واقع کلیسا رو آماده بکنن برای کار خدمت. Amen. Amen. And so in 1997 that's what the Lord began to speak to me about was Ephesians chapter 4. از سال 1997 این بود چیزی بود که خدا شروع کرد با من صحبت کردن در موردش. So I began to train prophetic teams. پس شروع کردم یه تیمی رو درست کردم که بخوام بهشون کارهای نبوتی خدا رو تعلیم بدم. Healing teams. و تیم شفا. Intercession teams. تیم شفاعت. I didn't know what I was doing to be honest. خودم نمیدونستم واقعا دارم چیکار میکنم صادقانه. I was just taking whatever I was learning. فقط اون چیزی که داشتم یاد میگرفتم و and I was sharing it with other people. با بقیه تقسیم میکردم. And do you know what happened? من این چه اتفاقی افتاد؟ As I was pouring into other people. همینطور که داشتم به اونها تعلیم میدادم my own gifting هدایای خود من my own calling و اون خواندگی خود من just seem to go to a different place in god انگار که اون خواندگی و عطایای خود من رفت به یک مرحله بالاتر instead of trying to be above everybody else به جای اینکه بخوام طرز فکرم اینجوری باشم که من بخوام بالاتر از همه باشم i was trying to bring everybody else to where i was داشتم سعی می‌کردم که بقیه رو بیارم اونجا که من هستم and the more that i was training and equipping the saints به هر چقدر بیشتر داشتم این تعلیم رو میدادم و خدمت برای خدمت آمادهشون میکردم the more god just kept pouring into my life و خدا بیشتر و بیشتر تو زندگی من ریخت you're going to notice that some of the greatest growth in your life یکی از بزرگترین رشد ها تو زندگیتون is not from what you gain in god این چیزی نیست که بخوای از خدا بگیری it's from what you give that god has given to you بلکه اون چیزی که تو اون چقدر که به مردم میدیه if you want to grow in the prophetic, اگه میخواین در قسمت نبوتی رشد بکنین. If you want to grow in hearing God, اگه میخواین در قسمت شنیدن صدای خدا رشد بکنین. If you want to grow in the scriptures, اگه میخواین در کلام خدا رشد بکنین. Or, or in any area, یا هر قسمتی که شما فکر شو بکنین. One of the greatest keys that I've learned over the years. یکی از بزرگترین کلیدهایی که من در سالهای اخیر یاد گرفتم. Bring others into what you're experiencing in God. افراد دیگر رو بیار تو اون تجربه ای که خودت با خدا داری انجام میدی. Because it's not when, remember the wedding of Cana. John oh, uh, 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 And remember they filled the water pots with water. Uh, when did the water turn to wine? اون آب کی تبدیل به شراب شد؟ the water did not turn to wine when it was in the water pots. وقتی که آبها توی کوزه بودن اونجا نبود که تبدیل به شراب شدن the water turned to wine when they gave what was in the vessel to somebody else to drink موقعی تبدیل به شراب شد که شروع کردن توی پیاله گوشتن و بدن به یه نفر دیگه it's when you give others to drink وقتی که شما به دیگران میدید که بنوشن that the water of scripture اون آب کلام خدا becomes the wine of the spirit تبدیل میشه به شراب روح القدس Amen. Amen. 
I mean, I like that. All right. <laughs> I like it too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so I want to just share with you a few practical things. حالا میخوام چند تا کار عملی رو باهاتون تقسیم بکنم. Of what do we do with prophetic words? خب حالا با کلمات نبوتی چیکار بکنیم؟ When somebody prophesies to us, وقتی یه نفر به ما نبوت میکنه، or God speaks something to us, و خدا یه چیزی رو با قلب ما صحبت میکنه. What do, what do we do with it? با باش چیکار بکنیم؟ I mean, over the last 25 years, I've had many, many words spoken over my life. And I want to be faithful with those words. And I want to be faithful with those words. And so I want to give you a few, a few practical things. Um, the first thing is, learn how to war with your prophetic words. Learn how to war with your prophetic words. Learn how to war with your prophetic words. نه اینکه با کلمات با اون کلمات بجنگید بلکه اون کلمات رو بگیرید و اونا رو شروع کنید اعلان کردن وسیله ای باشه برای جنگیدن شما اوکی اند دیس از کامینگ فرام 1 تیموثی 1:18 از اول تیموثوس 1:18 یپ فور فرست تیموثی 1:18 یپ یک هجده اول تیموثوس باب یک آیه 18 And Paul speaks to Timothy here in in 1 Timothy 1:18. And he tells Timothy that according to the prophecies that previously have been given to you. He says use those prophecies to wage the good warfare. به تو میسپارم تا به ملد آنها در نبرد نیکو پیکار کنی. Now, now what, what's he talking about? See, there are times that God gives you a word because he knows what you're about to face. Jesus told the disciples, go to the other side of the, of the water. And all night the wind is opposing them and they're rowing against the wind all night تمام شب باد داره بر علیهشون و بر ضدشون میوزه و تمام شب اینا دارن پارو میزنن که بخوام برن به اون ور what was the word of the lord کلام خدا چی بود go to the other side برید به اون طرف آب and what do they receive ولی اونا چی گرفتن opposition مقاومت we think if it's god it'll be easy If it's God, if it's God, we we think if it's God, it will always be easy. Well, that's not always the case. God is not easy. 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 God Uh, war with the prophetic words very practical here یکی از کارهایی که ما میتونیم استفاده بکنیم اون کلام نبوتی رو و باهاش بجنگیم number one write them down اولین چیزی اینه که چیکار کنیم بنویسیمشون write them down بنویسیمشون i know a lot of times we record things on our phone میدونم که خیلی اوقات ما رو تلفنمون ضبط میکنیم and that's good اون خوبه unless you drop your phone in the toilet or something ولی اگه تلفنت بیفته توی دستشویی اون موقع چیکار میکنیم okay <laughs> Then, then now your word is gone. <laughs> All right. So, so have multiple places where you have your word. Write them down somewhere. Get a journal. I have about six of these. I have words written down going back to 1998. من <laughs> That's my, my notebook model right there. Thank you. <laughs> and 
So, I, I mean, I didn't bring all of them with me because I'd have a big suitcase. But I have things that God would, every time God speaks to me, uh, I shouldn't say every time. I, I try to make it every time. Uh, you know, I, I open up my journal and I begin to write it down. I write the date. I write the time that he spoke it. And I write whatever details he spoke to me. If somebody else gave me a prophetic word, I want to try to record that and write it down. Why? Because number one, it shows that I that we value what God is saying to us. Amen. Amen. It shows that we value the word of the Lord. Uh, Paul says in Thessalonians, he says, "Do not despise prophetic words." Um, in First Thessalonians 5:20, he says, "Do not despise prophecy." Um, yeket, hmm, what is despise? For, for, yeah, I don't know if somebody wants to read it. First Thessalonians 5:20. It's okay. very short. Uh, nah, 5:20. You're going to read Thessalonians 5:20. First Thessalonians 5:20. Beast. Okay. Is that it? Yep. All right. You want to repeat that? Now, but what hara har mashumari? Okay. So, in the Greek, what this literally says, the, the word translated despise, it, it means, um, despise means to, to not place value on something or to consider it very low. So, so the, the, Paul is telling them, don't look at prophecies as something very common or very low. In other words, put great value on them. All right. The other thing that writing down does, writing them down, it helps us to remember them in the time of crisis. Many, many times as I've gone back to, re- to read what the Lord has said, it, it stirs my heart again. And it reminds me of what God has spoken. The second thing, um, when we're talking about what do we do with prophetic words, so number one is is we, uh, we war with prophetic words. All right. Um, and, and, and we said so we write them down. The second thing is that we continue to declare what God has said no matter the circumstances. So God sends Moses to Israel with a word of deliverance. And, and he's, he says, God's going to set you free. And we're like, woo, Jesus, thank you. Alright, it's a word of deliverance, word of freedom. And the next thing they experience is what? Pharaoh says, make their slavery harder. Make it more difficult. Why? Because he was wanting them to lose hope in that word. Okay. Next thing I want to share with you, because we're running out of time, um, <clears throat> is learn how to partner with God when okay. words are spoken over you. And we think, man, God spoke this word over me 10 years ago. I'm still waiting for him to make it happen. 
به اتفاق بیفته I'm just sitting back and waiting for God to do this فقط نشستم منتظر خودم که بخواد کاری بکنه And of course we don't want to make something happen in our own strength مسلما نمیخوام یه کاری رو با قدرت انسانی خودمون انجام بدیم But we have to realize that God also wants us to partner with him ولی با در این حال باید بدونیم که خدا دوست داره که ما با شریک بشیم Who named the animals in the garden چه کسی اسم گذاشت روی حیوانات God or Adam خدای آدم Adam God could have named them right خدا میتونست اسم بذاره درسته But see God is showing I want man to partner with me و اینجا خدا داره نشون میده که من میخوام انسان با من شریک بشه In the Hebrew where it says that Adam named the animals در در ابری میگه که آدم روی حیوان ها اسم گذاشت it doesn't just mean you know a name the way we think like lion or giraffe or whatever به این معنی نیست که فقط مثلا بگیم حالا اسمش رو گوشت مثلا شیر یا زرافه in the in the hebrew it literally means to to define the function of something در کلمه ابری اون چیزی که میگه نامگذاری کرد این بود که وقتی اون کلام رو گفت در واقع باهاش اون شخصیت و اون چیزی رو که یا هویت بخشید با اون کلامی که گفت با اون to define how something will will operate اینکه چجوری اون اون اسم رو که گفت چجوری اون حیوان از اون موقع به بعد بخواد در واقع عمل بکنه in other words Adam was participating with God. پس آدم داشت با خدا همکاری میکرد. To define how things would function in the earth. که در واقع بخواد what is define? شرح که بخواد تعیین بکنه یا شرح بده که چطور اون حیوانات بخوان روی زمین عمل بکنن. Let's say that again. بذار یه بار دیگه بگیم. Adam was participating with God. Adam داشت با خدا همکاری میکرد to define how things would operate in the earth. که بخواد تعیین بکنه و تعریف بکنه که چطور چیزها بر روی زمین عمل بکنن. You are supposed to participate with God. و شما برای این ساخته شدید که با خدا همکاری بکنید. You are supposed to partner with God. شما باید با خدا شریک باشید. To define how things will operate in the earth. که بخواید تعیین بکنید که در روی زمین چیزها چطور پیش بره. God was teaching Adam his authority. خدا داشت به آدم یاد میداد که اقتدارش چیه. Right? So, so God wants to teach you the authority that, that you have. خدا پس میخواد به شما تعلیم بده و به شما یاد بده که اقتدار شما چیه. That you're not just here waiting on God. که اینجا نیستید فقط منتظر خدا بشینید. You're called to partner with God. شما خونده شدید که با خدا شریک باشید. All right, when, when Israel comes to the Red Sea. وقتی که اسرائیل اومد رسید به دریای سرخ. And, and Moses is saying, what are we going to do? و موسا میگه که خب حالا با چیکار بکنیم؟ God, what's going to happen? خدایا And God says, "Why are you crying out to me?" Take the staff that I've given to you. And put it in the water. And you part the water. Who parted the water? <laughs> We know God parted it, but, he, but it was through Moses. We know God parted it, but it was through Moses. When Moses put his staff in the water, the water parted. Moses was partnering with God. The way that you're supposed to partner with God. For the word of the Lord to come to pass. I'm out of time. <laughs> All right. So.